So you want to develop games. Honestly, that's really awesome. But maybe you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed by all the questions that that can lead to. Maybe you want to make this really awesome open world landscape because you just finished Horizon Forbidden West. You sit down, ready to dive into a night of world building, but then all of those questions start popping into your head. What engine should I use? How do I make this tree? Why does my grass look terrible? How can I make my character move? Virtual texturing? World partitioning? Particles? What the f is Nanite? And you've been doing this for hours and hours. You're tired, confused, and you think, I'm too late. This is way too hard. And yes, game development is hard. In fact, it's really hard. But guess what? You can do hard things. That's why if you're driven, curious, motivated now, right now, now is actually the best time to learn game development. So while you may think that you're too late, there are five reasons that now is the best time to become an indie game dev. So now before we jump into that first reason, two things. When I say you, yes you, well if you're watching the video, you likely are interested in how games work or how to develop games. Maybe you were inspired by a game that you played. Maybe you have a really unique idea for a game mechanic that you want to implement. Or maybe you have a really amazing story that can only be told through games. Whatever the reason, you have a motivation behind your interest. Now that, that second point is actually money, which we're gonna put aside for a little bit and save that for the end of the video. Reason number one, infinite resources. You remember our open world idea? For every stumbling block that you come across, there's almost always gonna be a tutorial or a resource that can help you out. And that tutorial or resource can help you stop from stumbling. Want to make better grass? There's a tutorial for that. Wondering what engine to start using? There's a tutorial for that. You need trees for your landscape. Not only is there a tutorial for that, but there's actually a lot of different places that you can get assets that are either free or for very, very low cost. Not only are there tutorials, but there are actually all these various marketplaces where you can go to and get free assets, free trees, or trees that you can get for very, very minimal cost. In fact, there has never been such a huge amount of resources available to you to help you learn, practice, understand, or frankly, just give you a finished product. And again, a lot of them are free. Then there are the tools, game engines, modeling software, materials and textures, sound design. There are tons of free or affordable tools out there that you can get right now and start designing. Let's take music, for example. Right now, you can download any number of royalty-free tracks for your game, or you can just create your own music within your favorite DAW, use one of the hundreds of thousands of instruments available, plug in your effects, run that into FMOD, and program your music to interact with your game. That will then react to player actions, to the environment, and to any game mechanic that you're setting up. Do you know how they created music for Super Mario Brothers for the NES? With a little keyboard and that. For the second reason why now is the best time to become an indie game dev, you've already started. So maybe you've downloaded the engine already, or maybe you've written down a game idea that you have. Or maybe you've already started watching tutorials. Well, the good news is you've already done one of the hardest things there is to do when you're trying to learn a new skill, and that is start. Entering into an unknown area of knowledge is always difficult because you're exposing yourself to uncertainty. Your brain is presented with problems that it doesn't know how to solve. And frankly, that can be really uncomfortable. But by taking your first step into learning that new skill, whether that's modeling or level design, you've already gotten your feet wet. And the thing about your brain is that it actually kind of likes problems. Which brings us to number three. You're built to learn. You are learning all the time. And frankly, it's, it's not very often these days that you can pick what you want to learn. The problem is we either lose confidence in our ability to learn or we flat out need to relearn how to learn. It can be really difficult to learn a new skill, say modeling a face. We make that first attempt and it sucks. We see that outcome and we think, I guess it's not for me. Maybe you see the work of others and you think there's no way I'm gonna catch up to where they are compared to where I am now. Well, the problem is learning doesn't happen all at once. Learning is a journey that takes time to build on, to build a foundation. 
and eventually you build upon the information that you retain and you master it. Your brain loves new information when given in proper amounts. Having the awareness that learning a new skill is a process that compounds itself over time will help you stay motivated when you run into something that's really difficult. And when you do run into those things that seem almost impossible to figure out, remember reason number four, you already have a lot of expertise. So let's say you're, you're interested in developing a game. I'm going to assume that you probably play games and very likely have played games for a really long time. Well, every game that you've ever played, you've been internalizing those games, their mechanics, how they feel, how they look, what makes them fun. You've probably internalized so many different games that I would bet that you have a singular idea in your head of a dream game. The game that's like a Frankenstein creation of all your favorite games put together, and maybe you wanna make that. There is a lot of research out there that suggests that playing games is actually really beneficial to our brain development and how we think. From reaction time to spatial problem solving, color differentiation, those same experiences have conditioned you to understand a little bit better what makes a good story. How does a game have good pacing? What makes a game funny? Be careful. <laughs> Come on. I always am. Ah! I did not see that! You can literally be using all of that knowledge right now when you're developing a game. And know that you're being influenced by some of the greatest gaming experiences out there. Which leads me to number five. Game development is freaking amazing. So I'm gonna get a little Oxford Dictionary on you for a second. There's a German word, Gesamtkunstwerk, that essentially means total work of art. And first off, games are art. Do not let anyone else tell you otherwise. In fact, there are a few forms of media that integrate so many different types of art forms into a final product. You're talking about different culture, storytelling, science, mathematics, design, art, music, and the pure uncut technological power that you can get. One of the reasons game development is so hard is because it encompasses all of these different disciplines at the highest form. But that's also why games can create such transformative experiences. Within this medium, you can play soccer with race cars, build a farm with friends, explore the procedural cosmos, or mine for diamonds and build whatever you want. The possibilities are literally endless and cool new things are being built every single day. And there has never been a better time for you to start creating. Thanks for watching. And as always, a like and subscribe are very appreciated and help spread the content to others so they can see it too. And if you agree or disagree with some of my reasons, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. But before we finish, let's take a second and talk about money. Money is important. Making money is almost always a necessity, but that doesn't mean that making money is the most important or the most necessary thing with everything that you do. Making money as a game developer is even more difficult than learning how to develop games because there is so much that is out of your control. That's not to say it shouldn't be a goal of yours to make money from what you're creating, but it shouldn't be the only goal. It's important to take value in what you learn and what you create. Your learning is not a competition. Your power to create is not a competition, but making money is. So the most important thing to remember when it comes to learning how to develop games is that you can do it. There are really so many things that are cool and fun to learn how to do. And if you are truly interested in taking that journey, you owe it to yourself to try, whether you make money or not. Thanks for watching. And until next time, this is the Stay at Home Dev, signing off.